Howdy folks, Doc here with LastPass Tool, and I just picked this up a while ago, this large PB Swiss mallet. It's got a kind of a plastic polyamide top on one end, a steel cap on the other, both replaceable. This is their size 6 mallet. It's a dead blow. You can hear, you know, there's kind of washers on a rod inside this thing, um, and it's about 40 ounces. Uh, this is this size 6. Um, is I think their biggest of their dead blows. Here's their smallest. This is a size one. Um, little tiny guy here. Uh, I think this is about six ounces, something like that, uh, when I do the grams conversion. And this one, like uh, its big brother here, both have hickory, wood hickory handles from the good old USA. I guess we must have the best hickory handles. Um, anyway, these are uh, PB Swiss tools, so they are made in uh, Switzerland with that U.S. hickory. Same, I like uh, hickory on my axe handles. A lot of things that the type of wood that's used on a handle has to do with a couple of things. Obviously, you want a hardwood durability, but sometimes there's shock transmission and sometimes there's flexibility. Um, and hickory, like if you find it on axe handles, um, is is more for uh, reducing the 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 shock that's transmitted straight through um, versus flexibility. But uh, there are lots of choices with different kinds of hardwoods depending on what it is. If it's a, a hardcore striking tool, if it's a chopping tool, um, or uh, any other kind of you know tool, the the uh, type of wood. Uh, really matters. So hickory is often chosen for heavier duty striking tools. So anyway, that's where I'm, not where I wanted to go. I wanted to go over here and compare them to the snap-on. Now, these are all dead blows, except for this guy here. And I want to show you a little comparison. I've got a little chunk of railroad track here. If I take this big old 40 ounce, or, or yeah, 40 ounce PB Swiss um, mallet, dead blow mallet, and I'm holding it with uh, two fingers down here. Maybe I'll turn it here so you can see those fingers and drop it. I mean, it's, it's a dead stop right there. Not a huge test. Here's the little guy. Not much. Here's a snap-on. I've got a couple here. Um, this is the small, smallest. This is an 8-ounce. I believe. Yeah, eight ounce. So it's a little bit, you know, lighter than that. This, uh, I wonder if that's even less than six. But anyway, every time it's going to give me that bounce. What if I jump up to the 40 ounce? This used to be their biggest till they came out with that 56. So there's a bunch of bounce there. The 56, of course. That's pretty good. Now I'm going to compare that to a couple others. First of all, this snap-on full plastic dead blow. That's pretty good. Little bounce though. S-wing here, uh, standard uh, small ball peen. You know that that bounces like crazy. And then here is a, a plastic 45 ounce S-wing dead blow. It's full of something. That's good. Nice solid drop. So the snap-on uses basically uh, an enclosed or encapsulated container in the top full of shot. I don't know what the shot's made of, maybe lead, um, but still a little bit of a bounce. The PB Swiss has a rod through the center and then a series of washers. Um, so they're larger mass units, but obviously because of the inertia, one has to get away from the other before they can all start moving, and then the opposite happens. One hits, then the other, then the other, then the other, versus a whole volume of shot. So that's pretty, pretty dead for something like that. Compare that again to a similar snap-on. And I first discovered it with this little PB Swiss here. Started playing around with it, comparing it to my Snap-on, and uh, I was just impressed. If I hit it, hit it flat, it's dead. Well, 
matter what. I'm trying at all kinds of different angles to see if I can get a full dead, uh, dead blow. But anyway, the other thing about the PB Swiss, besides wood handles, besides being a little bit dead, or besides having a replaceable head design of, you know, beautifully machined metal and plastic, plastic, very dead, um, serialized. These are less expensive than the snap-ons. The snap-ons, they cost quite a bit. Um, but you can get into a PB Swiss for under 50 bucks, a small one, and then something like this. I think this was pushing 80 maybe, 85, something like that. Um, I'll put links below. Prices change. They go up and down. Uh, but I, I do like this. I like wood. Um, it is a little slippery. Um, they did put a lacquer on this thing, but that also helps, um, you know, kind of keep it healthy because it is it was a living material versus the plastic. Well, I guess you could argue that maybe it was dinosaurs or algae or something. But anyway, I thought you'd like to see that comparison because uh, you know this is is usually the the industry gold standard. Kind of hard to see with that. It is <laughs> these these are safety yellow and no kidding, um, but see on that red you know this is kind of the industry standard but there is a high performance option um, if you're interested in something like this with the pb swiss i don't know how durable it is the handle you are talking about old school like axe handles here versus something that literally has the flex i mean i can bend this thing and if you're really swinging it you can just feel that that flex back and forth um, as this thing you know, as I push on this, um, I can bend that handle. And that's deliberate, uh, both in, in kind of getting a little bit greater acceleration into your, your, your target workpiece, but also losing as much as possible of that, um, the reverberations, the shock back into your handle. And then, of course, it has a, a rubberized grip if you've got it down near the end. You can also choke up, and that's quite nice. So this is sort of an old-school design. Very dead, very nice production, um, and affordable, you know, compared to the Snap-on. It's not three digits, and <laughs> not over three digits, but it does have, you know, the, the traditional wood handle. So Snap-on has left that, but they are using a, uh, a shot-based mechanism at the top, so it is really good, but that's kind of interesting. If I get a solid straight hit, it's just dead. Anyway, I'd be curious what your experiences are with dead blows. Uh, it's a neat technology um, to have a, you know, try to try to minimize rebound, control the physics. Anyway, with that, Doc out.